So in today's video, we're going to talk about the hands and arms at the bottom part of the golf swing, the moment of truth where things really matter that needs to happen. Three things that I'm going to mention. First one, yellow stick on the floor represents our target line. Red stick, ignore the bucket, represents our plane line. The reason why I'm facing this way in towards this wall as opposed to hitting shots down the driving range is because the weather's so typically rubbish. It's so dark and so gloomy that whenever I put the camera on the back, it's just so dark you can barely see me. So we're gonna film this way where we're capturing more of the light. So that's explaining the video setup. Now, first things first, let's talk a little bit about how to swing the club coming down the plane line, okay? Because this is something that would seem really obvious but a lot of golfers struggle with. The surprising thing here is that your arms need to be much more in front of your body, again, than you would realize, okay? So what I'm gonna do, simple little exercise. If I bring my lead arm out in front of me and I'm just gonna let my lead arm come across my body to the point where it goes opposite my trail foot. And if I now uh, get my right hand to join my left hand and then kind of imagine I was holding a club, that's where we wanna be in this pre-impact phase, okay? So when the club's coming down to the parallel position, to be able to be on the correct plane, that's where your arm needs to be. Most amateurs you see have their arms really close to the body, like so, and that's why when you come down, you really struggle to come down on plane because the left arm gets too close, the right arm gets stuck behind you, and you might be able to fight coming down on plane here, but when you end up hitting it, because this arm is so far stuck, you end up scooping like this, okay? So first things first, to be able to bring the club correctly on plane, um, this is why right elbow to hip or left hand way more disconnected from your body than you probably realize that's the first thing that helps us bring the club down on plane number one number two is i'm going to use my swing buddy because when i watch students use my swing buddy in lessons they often do this no you need to be this okay so this is where sort of like understanding rotation and understanding you know moving the pelvis to the left understanding the importance of allowing swaying motion happens in the golf swing we need to move massively to the left to be able to advance things like your chest to be able to advance things like your right shoulder because that means that your right arm can continue to move through understanding that your right arm is trying to really extend through towards the target is absolutely fundamentally so important so those are two aspects that have been controlled we understand basically now that coming in towards the downswing your right elbow is going to move should we say in front of your hip or alongside your hip and then it carries on moving through that hitting zone it doesn't just stop okay that's a really big one now so far that would mean that we kind of from that little bit of information we kind of look something like this okay now this might look pretty good but we have a slight issue with the club face so the question is how does the club face get square at the bottom part of the golf swing okay so if i just sort of do what i said earlier we've got the hands and arms moving in front of us like we spoke about we've got the hands and arms continuing to move through and if i do this i can come down nicely on the plane line okay but we're going to have an issue with the club face now a couple of things how does the club then get to the back of the golf ball? Well, hands are going to carry on moving through. There's also going to be a natural amount of uncocking. You don't need to think about this. The uncocking will happen very, very naturally, which is basically this angle. My left wrist going into what's known as ulnar deviation, which means it goes this way. So, like so. Okay, so as my left wrist starts to theoretically uh, create that ulnar deviation, the left wrist will sort of flatten out a little bit and that will have a, an effect where the club face will look like it's starting to close. Um, the big question is it depends on where your body is. So if you're somebody whose body in, you know, shoulders are squarer to the target, then you're going to need more arm rotation. So I'll show you this from face arm. My left arm is now rotating. So is my right arm, but my left arm is now rotating to square the club face. If I open up more, then I've still got to square the club face, but I have to do it later and I arguably have to do less. Okay, so if that kind of makes sense, we understand this arm comes down here, okay? This arm is in front of you as you come into this position. The hands are gonna carry on moving through continuously, but we also know that there's gonna be a bit of this naturally happening at this stage, so we only need to control a little bit of arm rotation in that phase, and the amount of that is gonna depend on where your body is. So hopefully we get that, and hopefully you can obviously re-watch this and ask questions if there are any uncertainties that you have about it. The point that I just wanna make, remake again, from the face on perspective, let's bring the club down to that parallel. Okay, this position here, right? Right elbow position. What I said is the hands are gonna keep moving, 
okay? The club is naturally going to uncock, and depending on how open your body is, is going to determine how much arm rotation there needs to be. So for myself, I'm somebody who has quite a lot of chest rotation, my shoulders would be maybe 20 degrees open, so I need to have less arm rotation. Can you see what I'm doing here? To square that club face like so. Yeah, but my hands keep moving through. And that's the key thing, you have to understand. It's not to square the face. A lot of people tend to think you've got to do something like this and your hands have to stop moving and just roll. You can roll your hands as, sorry, you can roll your forearms as your hands continue to move through. And that's a big one. With online students, I always get that sort of epiphany moment when they understand that your hands can keep moving as you roll. So hopefully this video helps you out in a big, big way. Any questions that you have, let me know. I'm hoping that as we've sort of dissected it down quite basically into understanding the arms are in front of the body, understanding that the uncocking of the wrist happens very naturally, understanding that the hands continue to move through with a progressive amount of arm rotation, depending on your body rotation. Sounds quite complicated when you break it down, but hopefully it helps. Let me know. I'll see you soon.